Good evening and welcome to the Leader's Edge, where our mission is to help you level up and thrive. Design thinking. What is it exactly? How will it help solve my problems? And most of all, how can we pull it off given that people no longer meet in rooms, but they now meet in Zooms? With us tonight is Mr. Rock Cleo, one of the country's foremost experts on design thinking. He is also the brand strategist for the Commission on Filipinos Overseas. He has served as creative and branding director for companies such as JCM Makati, SM Retail, and Summit Media. He also conducts workshops for visual communications and, of course, design thinking. So, ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming to the virtual stage, Mr. Rock Cleo. Hello, good afternoon. Rock Cleo, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Nelson. It's really a privilege and honor to be here. And uh, I miss the, this show. Um, it surprises me. It's already season five. The first time I've been here, it's season one. Season yes, one and two. Yeah, to make yeah sense. and speaking of season one, this is like a sweet symmetry because in season one, early on in the year, you interviewed me. So now... I'm so glad that the tables are now turned, so to speak, the shoe is on the other foot, but it's my pleasure now, this time, we'll be drinking from your wisdom. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, it's a, it feels different not to be, uh, to be interviewed for, uh, for this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Rock, before we begin, let's mm -hmm. be a little bit personal. What started your love affair with design thinking? So wonderful questions. Um, again, thank you so much for having me here. My name is Rock Leo. I, I just uh, want to share the, with you guys uh, the, my journey. I have become a design thinking um, expert. So um, to begin with, uh, I started as a graphic designer. And as a graphic designer, you're, you're dreaming to be the top of the position, which is the, to be a creative director. So I worked my way all, up, um, all the way up to that position to be a creative director. And then when I became creative director, it's a different uh, role. It's a different role. It's uh, more in the leadership, um, human relations, client relations, et cetera, et cetera. So um, um, since I'm working in the biggest company in the Philippines, I need to come up. I need to have my own process. I need to have a process. So dealing with this biggest company um, and then coming, um, coping with the the fast um, change or economic uh, and then you know, companies demand. So you need to have uh, to come up with a process. So I stumbled upon, um, upon researching, no, I attended um, a couple of left brain trainings no, because I'm a right brain person. So I, I attended a couple of left brain training and uh, it suits me. Yeah, it suits me, the left brain training, but there is something missing. You know? As a creative person, there is something missing. And then I stumbled upon with the design thinking. And I've been searching on what is this design thinking and I'm applying it already. Uh, I applied this, I applied this to my company and to my department and it's, a, it's phenomenal, it's phenomenal. I discovered the power of design thinking and the turn around and my productivity, it's so phenomenal. It's, um, how do I say it? It's, uh, the, the change is enormous. So uh, I've been discussing this to my office mates about design thinking and then they're laughing about me. They're laughing about it because they thought it's something like a weird methodology. You, can ju you just came up, came up with this idea. So they were like, can you please stop saying design thinking? Everything is design thinking. It was like, can you just finish the work? And you know, because creative people, it's not appreciated you know, in, uh, in office. We know that, you know that, okay? Um, if you're going to search the eight mudas, Eight modes, the eight skills that's been rejected or not used in the companies is creativity. Okay, that's why most of the uh, creative department is uh, seen as seen as support department. Okay, there is no value. Um, but in, if you're going to look at the kaizen, the eight modes is the unused skills, which is creativity or human skills, um, personal skills, something like sort of like that. So. Um, to, to, to solidify my uh, knowledge in 
or in design thinking, I took it up at National University of Singapore because no one's offering design thinking in the Philippines yet, yet, okay? And uh, I see, uh, I see, a, I saw a vision no, in, in teaching design thinking and this could help us Filipinos to become creative and innovative. Now thinking that, um, that the future, the fourth industrial revolution needs uh, we need to have, uh, what should we call it? It's something like, um, we need to develop our creativity, okay? We need to develop our creativity because in the World Economic Forum, they released the, the third top um, skills that we need for the Indo uh, fourth industrial revolution is creativity, <laughs> okay? But in the Philippines, our setup here, creativity is just a support. Creativity is not for me. But... Um, the reason why I jump into training, speaking, and uh, workshops is to let people understand that you are creative. You're just not using it. We are all born creative. And that's my mission to help you, okay, to help you um, revive those creativity in your DNA. In your DNA. Um, this is what I'm always saying, you know, Sir Nelson, in my workshops and my training, that we are all born creative. Because the first thing that we learned when we were a baby, before we learned how to speak and walk and run, we learned how to draw. Before we learned how to speak, we know how to draw. That's how we communicate. That's how we express our feelings when we were a kid. As if you can observe, from age zero to 12 years old, they are so creative. But it died down. No? It died down because of our economy because of those people who don't understand the importance of creativity. So now, in the fourth industrial revolution, the world is now saying that we need to focus on this one. So there's an emerging need of to be a creative and um, innovative um, trainer, and I jumped into it. I'm so lucky now, and I'm so blessed that uh, I was, I am in this field, and now I'm training uh, conglomerates, big companies, uh, teaching them about this design thinking. So that's my uh, uh, design thinking journey, sorry, no sense. All started from a curiosity, how to be good in creativity, or be productive in my department. And then now I'm teaching people um, all those things that I learned for almost two decades and how to use design thinking and how to be creative again in their workplace. And that's an amazing journey. You started as a graphic designer. You want to level up or to stand out. Then you've discovered design thinking. It led you to a mission, which is to unleash the creativity of the Filipino people or people in general. How long did it take, by the way? How many years did that journey occur? Um, I started using design thinking way back in 2015 as a creative director of the, uh, the biggest company in the Philippines. Because, again, I need to have a process. As a leader, you cannot... You cannot disrupt or you cannot go with the flow, you know. But if, if you think that there's a, there's a, this company have needs, you know, um, there's a something urge in my um, in my uh, feeling that this will not work because it's called insanity. You know, Albert Einstein already tell that tell that to us that we are doing the same thing for three decades and you're expecting different results. That's insanity. So I was I was like. We cannot do this. We need, we need to be like how Google works, how Coca-Cola works, and how the biggest company works. So what are they using? So they're using innovation tools, and one of them is design thinking. So the journey, it started there. I'm using that. That's why my office mates are really pissed off every time I say, you know, let's do design thinking. Let's do design sprint. Let's, can you please stop? Can we just finish this, you know? Because it's really, really weird for a creative person to dictate to a left brain person, which is more logical, okay? Mm. It's really weird not to the office setup. So they see really department of creative as a support, you know? Um, but in my, in, my, um, in my workplace, I always say, please include us in the meeting. Please include us in the workshop. Please include us in this uh, project. No, Rock, we just wait there. We will give you the creative brief when it's done. No, inc include me. You need my opinion. I think, and then for me, uh, I need to be there because I need to understand what you guys are talking about. Okay? To easily express the visuals, 
um, to communicate the visuals properly because this is, this is something that um, most of the business people and even even the office workers or uh, office mates don't understand, which is the value of these visuals and how we communicate that. And that's this just strengthens me you know, to 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 broaden my knowledge in this uh, in this particular field and help these people understand the non-designers to understand and how to communicate with the designers because there's a big gap and misaligned on how to talk with them because all of these people who are dealing with creative people, they thought the creative person understood what they're trying to say. Hmm. But I'm telling you, there's a lot missing. And if you're talking to a designer and can you, can you do me a poster? Can you do me this? The designer were like, what? What? What they're trying to say? But if you're left brain, ano ba? It's a simple lang, no? It's just posters, everything there. Ako nang bahala. And <laughs> ikaw naman, designer, this is not, we are not like printer, okay? We are not like printer na if you want to print a poster, you should just click print. We are not like that. We need to think, we need to process our thinking as well. So, uh, our design as well. So, this is the, this is something like, no, it helped me, no, um, to, to brew this kind of um, skills and uh, I think when I jump out of corporate, until now, I'm still advocating the design thinking here in the Philippines. And um, the traction is really small, no? The traction is really small, but um, I'm so glad that I've touched this heart of these people. And they are now bringing this idea in, the, in their organizations, in their companies. So now I've uh, talked with the conglomerates like... Um, JG Summit, now with Emerson, mm. and it's a multinational company, okay? So surprisingly, multinational company embraces this idea. But local companies, they don't, I don't mm. understand that. I don't understand that. Yeah. But uh, I think it's all, I think in the mindset of the CEOs or the bosses, because multinational companies, they understand design thinking because they have design thinking in their, comp in their country, in the motherland. That's why they were surprised that there are design thinking practitioners in the Philippines. That's, I think that's where AIR come in and that's where the opportunity comes in. For me, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. I just keep on delivering the, the importance and the, how this design thinking could help in their industry, okay, in their organizations. And uh, I can push in that, no? because I have a mission, uh, Sir Nelson. No? Um, every time I discuss this, I have a mission and I share this to the people. My mission is to help uh, to train to train one million people by using uh, by to become innovative and creative by using the same thinking principles by the year 2030. So that's why that's another reason why I keep on pushing this forward because of my mission. That's amazing, and I think you found your brand and your calling. Now let's go to the brass tracks. In layman's terms, what is design <laughs> thinking? Okay, um, thank you, sir, Nelsonov. In a layman's term, yeah. So design thinking, to give you a background, design thinking is not only for designers, okay? So to clear, to clear the cloud, um, air, to clear the air you know, uh, about the confusion, design thinking is not only for designers. Design thinking is a produ productivity tool. This is the art of problem solving and decision making. So if you have, if you are expert in NLP, Six Sigma, or Kaizen, whatever, Ever um, methodology that you are certified, no? This is the glue to all other methodologies. So um, I talk with uh, Six Sigma friends, and they say, "Rock, this is the missing link in Six Sigma." Wow, wow! I didn't know that. Yeah, and this is like a chewable version of Six Sigma. Okay, for this is for the experts. Uh, this is for the experts. So this is like a chewable version of Six Sigma. Even a rank and file could understand this. You know, I, I told to my friend, you know what, you're right. Because I'm teaching my kids to be a design thinker. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. So now they excel in their school. They know how to deal with their own problems. And then they know how to solve uh, even a big problems they encounter in school. So design thinking is not limited to professionals. Design thinking is a mindset, Sir Nelson. It's a mindset where you put a human in the center. That's why when you Google design thinking, human-centered pops out. 
it, it's connected, no? Design thinking is a framework on, on problem solving where you put human in each processes. That's what you call the human center. For example, um, in personal, okay, in personal, you don't have money. So how you can create money? So stop focusing on yourself. Stop being self-centered. If you want to earn money, you need to start helping people. Okay? So when you start helping people, all the blessings comes in unconditionally. It's, it's like a magic. No? It's, I, I call it a law of surprise. This is a law of surprise that you didn't even imagine. Oh, thank you for bringing back this favor to me. I just want to help out. No, Rob. You deserve another client. Thank you for helping us. Rock, this is a project for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's why in my business, my mantra is to help. To give 10 times what I give them. Mm -hmm. okay? If I charge them this amount, I give them 10 times of that amount. Tatapatan ko yun. So that's my mantra. No? That, is, that is the human-centered in my business. And in a personal, in professional naman, in professional, so what would you do in, per, in professional is uh, something like, if you, this, is, this is what you do in your office, and then you're complaining to agad kung ano ginagawa mo and what you're doing in your office, this is, your, this is the job offer or job description that you signed. No? But now, if you want to be promoted, if you want to be good in your office, in your workspace, you have to give your 10 times. Okay? 10 times per effort. You have to go to extra mile to become better in this. But don't show off. Okay? Don't show off. Just try to reach out to your office mates and try to reach out with your teammates for the sense of help. Help. Improve your process to help them. Improve your streamline, your system to help them. Because your job is to help them. Okay? So, if your job, ito yung nari ko nariginig in my workshop. Kasi Sir Rock, kulang kami sa tao. Kasi Sir Rock, wala kami binibigay na equipment. Kasi Sir Rock, kulang sa budget. Kasi Sir Rock, ganito. Oh, you know what? What I heard all about those is are self-centered. So do you think your company will give you this equipment? Why do you think the company will give you this equipment if you don't give a reason for them to give you this equipment? If you don't give business, do you think they will give you this? So I think you need to start thinking about others before you think about yourself. So then this is what I, uh, what I do now. Um, this is... This is simplest way to explain the design thinking it's not about you it's all about them now the framework comes in on how to solve the problem for them thank I you hope it clear, uh, it, it's uh, it's clear now sir nelson <laughs> and that's amazing so it's a paradigm shift of a mindset instead of what's in it for me it's more like what can i offer to the other person absolutely yeah and that's why i love this show and that's why i love this show because this is a selfless, um, you know, sharing of wisdom. No, um, most of my, uh, most of the experts, they don't like to share their wisdom. They don't like because it's something like this is my trade secret. Why, why should I share this to the people? Why share this to the audience? So this is an opportunity. You no, know? this is selfless. This is a uh, human centered on what a uh, speaker's bureau is doing. No? This is speaker's edge. It's to bring um, this knowledge, all of this, all of their connections, all of these experts to you, to the audience. This is human-centered. This is human-centered. And this I, is their way of design thinking. I can see that the distinct pillar in design thinking is the term human-centered. I love it. And mm -hmm. I think like it's more like being of service to your customer, your okay. boss, your family, whoever it is it that you're going to do design thinking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were, um, as, I, uh, as I read, no, uh, me as a leader, my, real, my uh, definition of a leader is to be a servant. Servant to their people. That's my, that's my definition of leader. It's to serve my team. But this is uh, misunderstood by most of the leaders because why are they them? They need to serve me. I'm the leader. Okay? Parang, yeah. You need to report to me. I'm your boss. No. If you really want to be a good leader, you need to forget about your position and start serving them. Start listening to them. That is human-centered. If you take care of your people, their success is your success. So this is not something like misconception. Wait lang. Eh, hey, ako nga gumawa nito. This is all my everything. Ako leader nila. If you develop your people, what I'm, I mean, this is, I, I can guarantee, their success is your success because they were developed under your leadership. 
Can you mm-hmm. cite an experience where in design thinking has helped you in your life? Um, in my life, no. In my life, sir, I'm telling you, it's really a uh, phenomenal. Um, I don't know about business. Oh, wait, get there. Like, step back, then. Step back. Before I became a creative director, okay. Um, I became a creative director at the age of 35. It's it's young. It's early, and uh, I was so happy about it. About the reason. What I did is I'm always looking at the areas that I need to improve. So I use design thinking on how to improve this. As a leader now, as a leader uh, in the corporate, as a leader, it helped me to identify um, the areas that I need to improve to become a leader. So I start focusing on my people and looking at the extra strengths. And look at the strengths. And then every way, every month, I have this like internalizations. I call it internalizations because I apply my personal my personal um, uh, my personal style to the office because um, for me the style of leadership it's deep rooted to the leader okay if your if your department is magulo it's all because of the leader magulo din yung leader if your um, um, department is systematic it's because of the leader because it's the leader okay so kami naman yung department ko makulit magulo pero we deliver everything it's because of me my personality i want everything light Okay. When I, every time I work, everything I want everything right. So what I did is um, I used design thinking in my leadership. I discovered um, their strengths, no? Because not all designers are equal. They have their own strengths and they have their own weaknesses. So I, I focused more. I focused first on their the areas that I want to develop there. So the their strengths. Once I then I figure out their strengths. And I started developing, um, overcoming, helping them overcome their their weaknesses. No, Which I told them I need if we enable you for you guys to improve, you need to focus on your weakness, okay, and I'll overcome that to become a strength. Because the strength is strength for me. Strength is strength. No, it's a short strength. If you're really good at speaking, yeah, that's it. So what else do you need to improve aside from speaking? So that's the thing that you need to to to, to look at. So that's what they helped me to become a leader. And then um, when I resigned, um, the C's, no, the 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 C's told me to thank you for bring um, for putting up, setting up the structure in the creative department. And I I cried, I cried because I didn't imagine me as a graphic designer to become a creative director. And the biggest, uh, the tigers of Asia, will tell me the the value that I created in her company in their business. It's something like, it's more than a reward, okay? It's more than a reward. It's something, I, 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 I was very emotional at that time. And that is something, no? That is something that I hold on to until now, okay? So this is, this is what, I, uh, what I always say when I was um, you know, working with the corporate and HR, because I have design thinking for HR on how to engage employees. So... If you take care of your employees, if you're HR director right now, if someone uh, one is, uh, if there anyone is listening here, HR a- HR experts. So if you develop your employees, develop them, nurture them, and they become ambassador when they resign. So and now I'm I'm like uh, for me I'm like an ambassador of SM. So every time I go, I see SM is good. SM they take care of people. So I stand. In front of them, for all those people who don't believe in it, and I stand them and protect the integrity of SM because they nurtured me as a leader. You cannot say that to the company. So, it's, so there is something, you know, there is something that you guys need to look into because, uh, in my opinion, now ninety percent of resign they despise the company uh, because of the leadership, because of this. So maybe you need to look into to to all of this who resign to become an ambassador. So that's what I'm, um, what I'm looking at. This is what helped me in my profession. Now in my business, um, it's a different chapter of my life. I'm telling you, Sir Nelson, I don't understand business. In my family, we don't, no one runs business in my family. Um, to tell you honestly, lucky po kami sa hirap, okay? Um, we are a poor family. My uh, father is a taxi driver and my nanay is laban there. So how I became like this, Okay, businessman, and even my parents, even my sisters, my siblings asking me, ano lang, ampun lang ata si Rock, ampun lang yan, oh, kasi his thinking is different from us, okay? Uh, to tell you honestly, ladies and gentlemen, um, yung mga kapatid ko, they're not executives, 
Okay, ang trabaho ng kuya ko until uh, ngayon, no, construction worker and taxi driver, ate ko po katulong, uh, ate ko security guard, and some of them are teachers. So, ganun po yung level of my family and I'm really away from there. No? So, okay, even even my wife is asking me, paano nangyari yun? Paano nangyari to? That you are really, really away from your the family's DNA. So, I think hindi siya sumpa. No? This is what we believe in. Sumpa kami na ganito, ganito kami. This is a Filipino uh, belief, no? Hindi po yan, uh, hindi po yan nakadikit po sa sumpa ng family o sa dugo. You know? It's in your own personal um, motivations. Okay, so um, in my personal motivations, design thinking really helped me. And uh, I'm always, this is my mantra, is always look at my weakness. I'm not really good in speaking, Sir Nelson. Uh, in fact, I'm still practicing to be a speaker until now. And uh, as a creative person, I'm 100% introvert. <laughs> I am 100% introvert. Yeah. So I, I practiced this since 2015. I um I prepared for my dream since 2015. Ganun po ang preparation ko. And uh, sa one of my office mates, in fact, from other departments from my uh, company, asked me, um, "Sir, you're the one of the most busiest person here at SN. And yet, no pa niyo pa mag-training." Sabi ko sa kanya. I'll tell you my secret. I'm preparing for my future. What? What do you want to be? I want to be a trainer, a speaker, educator. And I want to, to share everything that I learned in the corporate outside. Because we have the, good, uh, we have the best practice here. And I think educating them could help progress the people. If, the, if these people progress, no, if we have this kind of mindset, the entire Philippines will progress. Kasi pag-iiba na tayo eh. Oo, Vietnam is overtaking Philippines really, really fast. And tayo, may problema natin si Pacquiao. <laughs> may problema natin si Duterte. Oh, and dapat may problema. We are focusing on, we were, we're focusing our energy to, to useless stuff. I know, sorry, sorry to pardon me for saying that. For, for some people, it's not useless. But for me, no, in my opinion, I don't focus on politics. I don't focus on news. I'm focusing on how to improve myself to help other people. So I'm always competing with myself, Sir Nelson. I don't compare myself to other people. I don't compare myself to anyone. That's what I learned when I stepped out of corporate. I stopped looking. That's why I stopped using Facebook. I stopped using Facebook because... I see a lot of people grow and I see a lot of toxics. So when I did, when I internalize, when I use design thinking on how to improve myself, these are the things that I need to stop because these are um, these are the things that's stopping me to grow. It's something like a very very heavy luggage, you know, that you are always always taking taking with your uh, in your journey. So I take out the big luggage and then fast track po ako. So now, my business is expanding to Malaysia and India. Mm. So that's how fast it happened. But in just three months, it fast, moved fast like that. And then I found my focus. And most of my friends are asking me uh, in my connections, Sir, may problem po ba? Why you, uh, why you left Facebook? No. Kailangan ba may problem if I left Facebook? I'm just, I just found myself. I just found myself without social media. Because I felt that I have in obligations to those people that I connected with. Wala naman akong obligations talaga. So it becomes my responsibility na hindi ko naman responsibility. And responsibility is to serve my client, to help the company grow, to help their business grow. And it's my responsibility is for me to take care of myself, my mentality, and to serve the church and my family. That is my objective. So in this time thinking, Sir Nelson, no, I was able to focus and find my meaning. Find my meaning. That social media is not part of my life. Social media is part of my business. Yun po ang nangyari sa akin. So, um, so now I stop everything and I, uh, I, I develop my, I still have my own, design, uh, my own Facebook, but I use that for business because I help the social media management of the companies that I work with. But I use that only for up, uploading and boosting, um, doing the FB ads, but I don't post anything anymore. What I focus now on the social media is LinkedIn because the people and the mindset there is different from Facebook. That's what I tell. That's, what, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. And uh, there's no bashers. There's no 
um, people who will disagree in your opinion. There's a, they're more professional. Okay, um, I'm not promoting LinkedIn, but yeah, you better go there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you, better, you better be active in LinkedIn, most especially for those people who are, first, who are developing their, um, their personal brand and you are expert in a particular field. That is the avenue for you, not Facebook. Okay, that Facebook, because you are in Facebook, you are dealing with high school people, high school, uneducated, um, undergraduate, no, not, 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 not to demean them, no, but you are a, exerting energy for a wrong reason. Okay, you need to be strategic on this. And this is where I came into the brand strategy. Sorry, Nelson. So, this is the journey now. Um, my coach, this is what I learned, no, um, this is what I learned in doing business. It's to my uh, I, I sampled upon to a Malaysian coach. This coach is he helps company business coach. He helps company to be an IPO ready. IPO ready means uh, you know to go to the stocks. So he asked me um, about my strengths. It's really it's really good. No, it's really good. So I've been doing graphic design. I, I'm, I'm kind of lost. No, I'm kind of lost. I'm observing a lot of services. And he was like, hey, yeah, let's sit down. Let's do a Zoom meeting and. And let me figure out, let me help you figure out what is your real strength? What is your superhuman power in terms of business? So we sat down everything. I do this, this, uh, education, trainings, workshops. You know, I do design, uh, des uh, design thinking. I do designs for the client. So he keeps on digging. He keeps on digging. And then we figure out, you know what, bro? You're a brand expert. Why? Because your thinking is different from the other designers. That's why you move up to that level to become a creative director. Wow, I didn't see that. It's in your DNA. So right now, Rock, I want you to focus on branding. So how about my design thinking? I don't want to believe that. And then he told me, mixed it. And then I innovated, yeah, I innovated. Um, think of ways on how to integrate my design thinking into branding and voila. <laughs> I created a framework on how to develop um, um, a brand of champions. Okay, so that's what I developed now, a brand of channels. That's where I came up with the word brave. Here, up here, the brave. So brave, I'm helping now brand to become brave, brave um, to move forward and uh, to, to become strong in the, in, in the industry, in the e-commerce industry. So th that's my uh, journey, sir, Nelson. <laughs> and it's a wonderful one at that. And I'm hearing several things from your talk that number one, for example, well, when the mission is propelling itself, the people will follow. And you said that you have already businesses even overseas and you didn't even have to make connections, sales talk, they come to you because they see the value that you give. Mm -hmm. The other one I learned here is that you're very selective in your social media. Yeah, that's true because I was thinking, why would this person, this trainer, this entrepreneur put something social media, let's say Facebook, where this is not his target market. These are not his decision makers who buy his product. So why spend your time and energy and you're there? So I think you're on the right track, especially when you're now being active in LinkedIn. I'm also a LinkedIn fan myself. And by the way, guys, he is also one of the top 100 people to follow on LinkedIn. So stay tuned to him in terms of his Thank LinkedIn you, profile. Thank you, sir. Now, Rock, in terms of design thinking, I heard that there are stages about that. Can you walk us through them? Okay, sir. Thank you for giving the opportunity to walk you through the entire phases of design thinking. Um, in fact, um, if, and you can Google design thinking now, and there are so many uh, definitions of design thinking in Google. Um, but to help you understand, no, there's a five phases, which is empathy, define, ideate, prototype, and then test. So again, empathy, Define, ideate, prototype, and then test. So these are the five ideal, or um, I call that Stanford University's design thinking process. And um, it's been developed now, it's evolved already. And this methodology has been present for almost three decades, more than three decades. And uh, British design came up with their own design thinking. They called it Double Diamond. Google created their own design thinking, called it um, Design Sprint. IBM developed their own design thinking. They called it um, design thinking enterprise. So it's, but the, the, the DNA or the base of this, the framework is, are, are all similar. similar. So, so for the first part of the design thinking, empathy. Empathy is understanding the behavior of the, or the persona 
of your audience, your target market, of the people you serve. That's empathy. So once you understand them, you need to define. Define is the problem. You need to define the specific problem. Okay. So step back. Empathy, understanding people's behavior, their persona, okay, gathering information, and then figure out the problem. And then at the define, you have to find the specific problem. Okay. So that's define. That's the role of define. That's the goal of define. For the ideate, the goal of ideate is to come up with the specific solutions. Because in the brainstorming, in fact, you can you can you can still use the usual with mind mapping, etc. Whatever brainstorming tool that you have, um, it's not again design thinking is a not non-linear non-linear process. So it's not like oh we're already in step three we cannot go back. Mm. It's not like that. It's not like that. So yes. if you're not happy with the empathy, and then if you think this is not a specific problem that you need to address, you can still go back and then do some tools, no? on tools of on how to define the problem, to find a specific problem. So for the idea, you can still use the brainstorming tool that you are familiar with. And there are so many design thinking tools that you could use as well. So now, in idea, the goal here is to find the specific solutions because this one of the struggle in the corporations and the organizations is to figure out what is the solution for this? What's the final solution for this? Okay. So uh, in a normal brainstorming, we have tendency you know, to, to talk about this and discuss this. It's a different type of discussion in a, diff uh, in a brainstorming. But in design thinking, it's more on the visual thinking, more on visuals rather than discussions. So you have a post. It's, that's why you see a lot of post. It's a sticky notes. Uh, if it's virtual, we have free program like Google Jamboard. You can use G slides. You can use other freebies like Figma, etc. There are a lot of um, collaboration to, to, to do this design thinking and decision, decision making right then and there, virtually or offline in the office. So that's the idea. Now, the next type of part of the design thinking is the prototype. Prototype is making your ideas into real, into tangible. So if it's a service, you have to create a role playing about the service. If it's a product, you have to create a prototype of the product. If it's an organizational chart, you have to create an organizational chart. Okay. So you, you cannot discuss this to your boss or to all your office mates or to your teammates. We just discussion. You have to create a prototype and you have to make sure this is something like ready for implementation. But before you implement it, before you execute it, there is a last part of the last phase of the design thinking, which is why I call test. Test is testing all of your discussions, your idea, your solutions. But this test, you don't have to test it right away, meaning execute. The problem, the problem, no, the usual, the usual way on doing this, if we have an, a, a problem, we, we jump into creating a solutions. Okay? This is the usual way. We jump into the solutions and then implement it without testing it yet. Mm -hmm. So in a design thinking way, we have this testing it first, okay? Go, and then get the feedback, and then go back to the drawing board, empathy, define, edit, prototype, and test, and then iterate again, go back again to the drawing board, bam, 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 empathy, define, edit, prototype, and test. If you're okay, in the practice, most of uh, my friends who practice this, they say three iterations is fine. Mm. Okay, so after three iterations, and then bam, execute. Is it 100% effective? 100% 100 effective, but still needs for improvement because the project is just started when you execute it. The normal execution, no? Ang nakikita natin, once we execute, I'm done. Tapos na tayo, Woo! congratulations guys, congratulations. No, in design thinking, we are just begun. We are just started. Because from there, when you implement it nationwide, you have to look at the problem again, get the feedback. Okay, that's why when you see the operating system in Android, they have version one, version two, version three, version four. Hmm. That's the innovation comes in. That's the innovation. Hmm. So those are the five stages of the process that you can practice now. Um, 
Um, give you an example, Sir Nelson, no? because my participants is always asking me, Sir, the idea of design thinking is really nice. So how can I uh, influence my office mates? Sabi, sabi ko sa kanya, you cannot go big time. Go in the micro. As in micro, start with your team. Okay? After starting with your team, try it with your other, uh, other departments. The one who is closest to you. For example, um, Sir Nelson, friend tayo sa office. No? So Sir Nelson, um, nagbago ko ng process, ha? Oh, ano to? Rock okay to, ha? Yeah. Ano to? Ano to? Sir, experimental lang to. Basta, <laughs> sir, please bear with me. Yeah. Excuse me that. So, um, and then after that, it works, okay? So, I, I know the process na ni Rock, okay? Okay ako sa process ni Cleo. Wala kami problema. So, every time na meeting, ganun ang kita sa office mate ko. Wala, wala problema sa process mo. Good. So, kaya yung mga office mates ko, Cleo, oh, alam na this. Yun na sinasabi namin. Because they, they already, uh, already implemented the, design, the process doon sa kanila. So, and then, the entire, um, the entire department niya, nationwide, na-implement ko siya. Ganun po, no? It's a, it's a little improvement. No? Don't, don't do radical change. So, ganun din, no? If you're implementing something in personal or professional, you have to, you have to follow the five frames of, uh, the five phases of design thinking. Yes, and I think I learned something there in the sense that design thinking may sound so much of a, you know, a lot of meetings, a lot of collaboration, and people will complain about that. But in linear, they don't see this. In linear, it's going to be longer and more expensive, more difficult. In linear, you jump to the solution, you launch it, then you have problems, then you have to product recall, I don't know. Then you have to do damage control. Then you fix the problem. At least in design thinking, everything is self-contained while it's still safe early. Then when the prototype is tested multiple times, when you launch it, chances are it'll work very well. I think that's the beauty of design thinking from what I hear from you. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know you're a process freak as well. I interviewed you. You have so many processes as well. I'm a process freak, no? Um, that's why um, I'm different to other designers. I really love process. So... If we don't believe in the solution, uh, the output, just believe in the process. That's what I'm always telling to my um, to my clients. So um, to give you another sir idea on how good and how powerful design thinking is, imagine a project that's being developed for a year, or six months, or a couple of months. In design thinking, you can fix a big problem in just four days. Mm. No kidding, in just four days. That's the power of design thinking. Okay, now I'll throw the monkey wrench at you. Huh? I, do, I do remember seeing people in design thinking in one room and there's posters all over the place. There's visuals, there's sketches, paper, prototypes, that sort of thing. Now we are in lockdowns, work from home, pandemic, Zoom meetings. How do we now make that one work? So perfect, perfect. Um, in fact, um, all the design thinking practitioners now, we diverted to digital, digital. So again, there are so many design thinking tools or collaboration tools available. There are free and paid. Of course, paid are absolutely wonderful experience. But for the free ones, you can use uh, G Slides, okay? Mm. So G Slides, um, you can share the link to those participants who want to collaborate with or to brainstorm with, and you can use that as your, um, as your board, okay? As your whiteboard. In Zoom, they have a whiteboard as well, but I don't yeah. suggest to use that because um, it's one way, you know? It's only one person to control the whiteboard. Um, mm, my second suggestion is recommendation is G, uh, sorry, Google Jamboard. There, Google Jamboard is somehow is um, the the free version of the paid collaboration tool. So Jamboard is really nice, and uh, you can share the link to other people, and those um, who have link can join and uh, contribute on the um, particular web app. So all of you all together simultaneously can contribute your idea. Third, I could recommend the free is Figma. Okay, Figma is a, a web-based app used by web designers, web app uh, designers, all the technology designers. This is a very user-friendly um, design app tool, but they're a collaboration tool. They just implemented it now. And it's still on a beta test, but it's really nice. So 
I use that for my uh, brainstorming with my clients and they were surprised, no? Because again, when you're talking to your client, you have to give them an experience, okay? Don't discuss it to them. So you give them something experience they will not forget. That's what I learned in branding. So give them a uh, Figma and then that's free. For paid, um, I suggest Mural, okay? Mural is, uh, everything's there. There's a timer, voting, etc. All the design thinking facilitators that will be needing it's in Mural. There's another competition, it's called uh, Miro. Hmm. But for me, in my experience, Mural is um, the best. So those are the solutions sir, Nelson, that they could use um, for in this new reality. <laughs> yeah, so there's no excuse for doing design thinking even though while we're in our old individual houses. And I love that because that's where we also level up in terms of technology. Now, the question is this, are there any tips and tricks when it comes to facilitating a design thinking session online versus before pandemic? Is there some special thing you have to consider, some tweaking of your, the way you facilitate the meeting? Um, yes, yes, sir. Um, in fact, uh, there's a cert certification to be a facilitator of design thinking. Um, that's uh, where I get my at the design sprint, you know, um, the, the, the Google's design sprint. So um, the trick there that I could sh share um, to, to our audience is first is you have to detach yourself in, in, in your facilitations because you have a tendency to give them the solutions right away. But as a facilitator, don't, don't do that, okay? If you understand coaching, use your coach hat. You have to coach them and don't intervene in their ideation, in the process of their idea. So try, try to, you know, um, what I'm saying this is uh, resist the urge, no? Resist the urge to give them the solution right away. So, um, because it's not, it, yeah, it's helping them, no? It's helping them fast track, but it personally, it doesn't help them. It doesn't help them to think, okay? The idea here is to teach them how to think. So even if you're not around, they will still can think of the solutions for them, for themselves. So um, try to use the, every time you facilitate, try to use your coach hat. That's what I, uh, that's what I do. So, and then um, don't try to be, uh, don't try to be uh, expert in this field, no? Because if they Googled you, if they Googled your name and you're not expert in this field, you're going to have a problem. So for me, again, I'm not telling, all the time I conduct the same thinking, I told them I'm not, expert in pharmaceutical company. I'm not expert in technology. I'm not expert in your field. I'm, ex I'm, a, I'm a brand expert. But what I can say, I'm a process expert. That's why I can work with other people. So to clearly define the role of facilitator, you are like a blender, okay? The blender's job is to, to blend all everything that they will put in there and to come up with a delectable juice or shape, whatever you want to call it. So that's the, for me, you know, that's my definition as a facilitator, is to help them you know, um, extract the creative juices in their mind. Even if it's really, you know, something like they can, you, you know the answer, but try to do some process of design thinking framework and uh, help them extract the juices in their mind. That's the job of facilitator. Because if this is the, this is the something like dangerous, uh, as I, I may say, the danger is here if you suggest the solution and that solution doesn't fit, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. So let them think about the solution. And so at the end of the day, if they say, I think the solution that we created is not okay. Um, yeah, this is iteration one. Let's go back to the Raven board and let's do the same thinking again. Oh yeah, you're great, Rock. I love that. Yes, ma'am. That's what I, uh, this is what I'm saying. Before we implement it, we have to test it first. That's where the facilitator. So you have to be, uh, what I suggest here, you have to be, you have to walk the talk. That's number one. You have to practice to yourself, to your personal, to anything. So to tell you honestly, Sir Nelson, I'm practicing design thinking almost every day. Every day. Every day. So this is how we, uh, this is the perfect way to master this design thinking and facilitations. And I facilitate my kids. I facilitate this to my wife. You know, all the guinea pigs happen inside the house. <laughs> but uh, Everything is okay. Okay, everything is organized, as I would say. Um, and then practice to your client. Okay, so keep on practicing. For me, um, this is a lifelong learning as a facilitator. You know? and then in fact, there's a, another 
there's a technique as well on how to facilitate Sir Nelson. Um, and uh, you have to be good as well on how to facilitate that. So for me, my style is gamified, gamification. Okay? So para hindi ma-board yung, yung team nyo, uh, yung client nyo. Kasi if you don't have any design thinking in your process and facilitation as well, and if you be like same-same to other facilitator, the experience will not be okay. Alright? So alam natin to, the Kano model, no? The Kano model is something like what is okay today, what is wow today, it's, um, it's uh, regular tomorrow or basic tomorrow, and obsolete the following day. So as a facilitator, you need to have a, uh, you have to innovate yourself. I met a lot of people who was into facilitations, uh, facilitators, and I asked them, so how long have you been facilitating? 10 years. So is your slides the same from the first day until, yes. It shouldn't change, right? It shouldn't change. Oh, that's why they didn't change. They were stuck. Okay, so so that's my that's my I, my that's my suggestion. No, so keep on evolving, keep on uh, developing as a facilitator. That's my tip to you guys. That's my tip. So that's why I'm always. Um, I, I told them. I in fact I have a client. They got me again for uh, for three months. They got me again for for a big project, and then the the HR director says, "Did you change the framework? Did you change this?" Is it bad or good? I asked her. Is it bad or good? It's amazing. It's different. Oh, thank you. Because um, I'm always, I have this habit of changing my slides every time I give a facilitation. Amazing, Rob. You're really an innovator. I was like, thank you, ma'am. Thank you that you, you observed that. Um, my objective as a facilitator is to give the best from your team. So that's my objective. No? That's my I told you, I'm learning from business and learning as a brand strategist, you have to give them the best. The best, everything the best. And even the experience when you facilitate. So again, you have to detach yourself. Don't be human-centered because I've met, as a corporate, as an employee, I've met a lot of facilitators. I always feel that they're expert in their field. Alam ko yun, nayaramdaman ko. Pero I think that's the dilemma, no? You don't make them feel that you're an expert in this one. Make them feel that they are a special, not you. Other way around. That's design thinking. Human-centered. Make them feel they're special. Mom, I know there is something. Your vision is very good. Let me help you extract that and express that. Uh, um, navigate that journey to deliver this to your customer. Wow. Something like that. So that's how that's how I began, sir. That's um, that's how uh, that's my tip for facilitation. <laughs> wow, that's quite you know. I'm after this. I'm going to replay the video. I'm going to go in slow motion and squeeze every <laughs> drop. Speaking of squeezing, okay, I'm going to be all over the place. I know there are five stages, and each five is vital. And mm -hmm. if let's say one is you know something wrong, you go back to the invitation. Now, mm -hmm. you said something about when you facilitate the ideation meeting and then you squeeze them, right? But what yes. if, and it's a common thing in my situation as well, I would ask somebody, what's your idea? And he says, I have no idea. I'm, I have no idea at all. So what do you do to, you know, pump the, prime the pump or something? What do you do then to whether open up or jumpstart the creativity? What do you do? Um, there is a... There is a preamble in every tools of design thinking. And uh, um, ang tawag namin doon, my terminology there is to parang, parang soften the meat muna no, before you serve it. So help them understand the tools, okay, and before man jump. Pero before, before the ideation kasi, we have to understand the specific problem, okay. So it's really hard to it's really hard to think of a solution if you don't all of you don't agree on specific solutions. So that's an important thing, which is the empathy and the define. So in ideate, if this person had don't have any idea, I told them, I always told them that your ideas, no, your ideas, there is no right and wrong in throwing ideas. Okay, that's my tip. Just throw everything that you can think of. Who knows? No, that will change everything. Just throw everything. Okay, and then I defer judgment in ideations. Defer judgments means killing the idea. So I have a tip now for everyone, for audience. Stop saying no, 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 and every time you brainstorm, or, hindi, hindi. 
don't don't give that kind of expressions, no? Because that in other people, it's something that you're rejecting them. I know you don't have any anything about it. You don't have any intentions not to hurt them. But in other people, you don't you don't understand that you're hurting them, and in the future, they will not throw ideas anymore. So our practice is yes and yes and oh oh. I, yeah. So even if the idea is no. You cannot stomach, no? even if the idea is, you can't stomach the idea. It's really out of this world. It's really out of the context. It's way really beyond of our conversation. Don't kill the idea. Don't laugh at it. And just say, yeah. And I think this is better if we do this. Yes, and. So all people will contribute. Because um, the idea, the, the objective, as a, you're, you as a facilitator, your objective is to, to motivate them, to motivate them to give their ideas, okay? To give their ideas. So as a facilitator, you have to stand in the middle and ask them one by one, okay? So what, how about you? Okay, you do this, you do this. How about you? You, have, you need to ask certain questions. So um, in fact, I, don't, I didn't experience that in my design thinking facilitations because um, the tool of design thinking is perfectly designed serving for those people who are afraid to contribute or for, perfect for those people who are can extract their creative juices. So we call this divergent and convergent thinking. Okay, I'm going dive deep a little bit to the process of facilitation. So we have this, we call it divergent and convergent thinking. Divergent thinking is to go solo. Write down your idea. Nothing's, there's no right and wrong. Just write it down. And then after a couple of minutes, I will tell them, okay, collect all the ideas, Post it on the wall, all the sticky notes, and then decide. That's where the divergent comes in. So all of them will discuss. I'll give you a couple of minutes to read all the post-its and decide what idea we're going to, what direction are we going to. So in this way, no, Sir Nelson, to, to continue my uh, explanation on this matter. Um, the usual setup of meeting Kasir is we are we are all like agreeing to the boss. That's the usual. For example, if you're my boss, you can accept, no? And then, sabi mo sa amin kung gagawin namin. That's the usual setup. In design thinking, we don't have this. Kasi, um, I, again, I'm, I'm creating a comparison between the usual and the design thinking way of brainstorming. Kasi we're discussing the ideation po, no? So, yeah. So the usual way of brainstorming is that boss are the rock star. Boss will think of everything and the people, the rest of the audiences or those every, um, who are there no, in the meeting are COOs. COO, meaning COO ng COO. Oo, oo. Parang, um, I have an idea. Okay, I'm a leader. Gawin mo to ito. Anyone, any idea? Okay, sir. Okay. Oo, yeah. Uh, how about you, sir? How about you? Opo, opo, opo. Do you like the idea? Opo. So after, when they step out the room, this is the funny thing. I experienced this in almost two decades. After stepping out the room, right after. Alam mo, hindi ko gusto. Eh, hindi naman sinabi ni Bo. Eh, ba't di mo sinabi? Eh, bago lang ako dito. Eh, hindi ko alam. Eh, niyama siya yung boss. So this is the problem, no? This is the problem. Um, this is what I call this, uh, we're doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results. So, um, in design thinking, all voices are heard and all ideas are entertained. So that's why we have this divergent thinking and convergent thinking. And kagandahan pa dito, sir, no? it's a diplomatic because everybody votes. Everybody votes. So now, if you're going to ask me, I know a role in leader. In fact, napakahikap pa role in leader. As a leader, your role is decision making. And that's the hardest part of the role of the leader. It's the decision making. Why? <laughs> when you ka, ka. Okay. That's that's the that's the hardest part of the role of the leader. So there, sir. So I hope um, I was able no, to 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 clarify that um, your question there. Yes, and I learned a lot, and I believe it goes back to to human centeredness because, like, even that COO, it's like it's not me, it's not my idea, it's your idea, it's you're the voice, you're representing the customer or something. And I think one of the mottos I can see is you drop your ego, that the, you're, you may be the boss in title, but you know, we're equals. And you said all ideas are heard and there's no judgment. We just have to also build on each other. That's the yes and. So I love yes that. And. Now, 
there's something in the empathy part. I love the term, and I wonder if it's relatable to the usual way, let's say psychological term, that empathy is like you feel the feeling of the other person. Is that a similar concept in the empathy as defined by design thinking? Yes, sir. Perfectly. It didn't change the definition of empathy. It is just they included this in the process. They included it in the process. Um, again, um, Google is using this process. Uh, Stanford is, uh, is teaching this to all professionals. And you will be surprised, sir. No? Most of the people who attended or certified in this design thinking are non-creative people. They are doctors, um, engineers, etc. They are non-creative people. Because these, they see the, the, the relevance of this in the future. So now, sir, um, empathy, yes, it didn't change the definition of this. And it's still understanding the behavior of others. So it's just like reading what they want. And um, if you're going to ask me if there's a secret formula or tools on how to do this, um, there is no secret sauce in doing this. Empathy is really you know, um, to, to go there and that place, converse with your people, talk with them, observe them, and understand them. So th that's the only way to have the, get the empathy. It's to, be, to really go down um, with this uh, particular client or audience or with your people. That's the empathy, sir. You know, you raise an interesting point about left brain people like me, I'm an engineer, mm -hmm. being so task-oriented, so numbers-driven, yet you say, you know, you have to, it's almost like, like uh, what they call that new age that you have to feel the other guy or you have to really try to get into the other guy's soul i don't know but here's my question in mm -hmm. empathy is it something that you can learn or is it something that's already inside of you and you draw it out somehow and what if let's say somebody claims that i have no empathy because you know that's who i am what do you do then um uh it's a wonderful question. Um, in fact, all of people, we have empathy in our DNA, but we just don't know how to extract that. Mm. That's where the that facilitators comes in. It's to, again, to extract the juices in your um, DNA. So, for example, um, we all, we, there's a three, D, three stages or three differences of empathy. Um, and um, that, those are the things that you need to understand, the three, um, the three empathies. No? So, now... Um, one of them is something like emotional, something like um, incognitive. Before you say it, um, I already understand what you're trying to say. Okay, that's empathy. And another empathy is something like, um, um, I know, nahirapan siya, but I don't want to help. Something like that. Okay. And then another stage of empathy, yes, um, it's an action, which is action-driven, which is, yeah, I know you have a problem. Can you assist this? Can you, can I, how, can, how may I help you? Something like that. So those are the um, the the empathies no, that we have in our DNA and the experts already studied this. And as a facilitator, you need to understand where these participants are coming from. Because no? um, um, if you don't see them, um, parang iba kasi it's timid not to share or something like afraid or shy, but you don't know what's happening inside of them, that why they don't participate. So that's why you need to find ways um, to, to extract this empathy in them. But I am telling you, sir, this empathy is something like, um, it's in our DNA. It's a, para siyang, um, we are just shy to practice this. No? In, uh, we are just shy to express this in our office or in our client. But um, as an expert opinion, as an in my educated, educated opinion, you have to practice this because um, this is the way to understand on how to improve your process, your system. And that's the only way to help you, you know, to improve your own system. That's great. Mm -hmm. And now question, when it comes to the defined stage, yeah, I do appreciate the fact that you have to define the problem. And then of course, what I understand from design thinking is that you always have to question whether you have to reframe the problem. My question is, how do you know you have finally arrived at the correct problem statement? Is there some way for you to know? Otherwise, how do you know that you jump in that this is the problem? And then even though it's two or three iterations, it's still the wrong problem. How, how do you know? Perfect question, sir. Uh, still, in the design thinking, um, this is where the divergent and convergent comes in. Mm -hmm. um, the divergent is, again, is solo. All people will think of the problem, write down all the problem that they could think of based on the informations, on the empathy um, that they get. Um, it's 
whether it's from the data, based on their feelings, externals, ex uh, anywhere, okay? So all the touch points we need to get, gather all the data, study it, define the problem. In your opinion, for example, if you're part of the design thinking um, workshop. So, sorry, Nelson, I want you to write down, I want you to write down anything that you could think of. The problem, based on this data, what do you think the problem is? So all the people will write down their problem. So after a couple of minutes, post it in the wall. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to read all the post-its and um, categorize it. So we have this kind of affinity mapping. So where we categorize all the problem. So magugulat ka, no, Sir Nelson. Magugulat ka. If they wrote a lot of problems, for example, 50 problems, if they do the affinity mapping, magiging tatlo lang ang problema. Tatlo lang ang problema. All of my clients were surprised. Is this true? Tatlo lang problema namin? Yes. Tatlo lang. So if you're thinking of akala nyo, dami nyo problem, this is because hindi ka visual, no? It's more on discussion, sabi ko. So if you have three problems, which one of this is your priority? So voting yun. We have a voting session. Okay? So that's why it's diplomatic. Walang COO dito. Yung COO lang ng COO. So it's diplomatic. Um, I will give three votes for you, three votes for them, and three votes for everyone. Okay, so now the rulings of um, design thinking is you can use the three votes you can in a particular category or you can spread it. Yeah, so I give them one minute to vote and then bam, after one minute there's a result. And this is our specific problem because everybody agrees. It's really diplomatic. And then I'm going to ask the decision maker, for example, you're the boss. Sorry, Nelson, there are three problems arises in the, uh, in the data that we gathered. Are you agreeing that we proceed on this project, uh, on this problem? Yes, I think that's the, that's the real problem. Bam. Okay, next step now. And so that's, that's how I facilitate now. It's really diplomatic. That's why in design thinking, this is kind of the modern, let us say in a layman's term, this is a modern style of brainstorming. Na pagkatapos nyo mag brainstorming, bati bati pa kayo. No, walang sama ano. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, for me, I, I just want to make it lighter um, um, discussion and want to make it uh, want to have fun. Ayoko yung yung masadong seryoso na meeting. Of course, so we need to be serious, but serious fun add something like new experience in a brainstorming. Na something. Wala ka iba to. So now, pag nagpagkaw ng meeting, for example, nagpatawag kayo ng meeting. Okay, guys, meeting tayo. Ay, I like it. Kasi brainstorming na naman tayo. Uh, design thinking na naman tayo. Wow. So this is so how it makes people excited to go to the meeting. Hindi oy meeting. Naku, ano kaya ang problema na naman? Ano kaya nangyari? Na-implement mo ba? Oo, na-email ko sila lahat. Oh. So alam mo yun, yung yun nangyari. Eh. Um, so at least this one, oh, it changes the minds of people and they're becoming more empowered. Okay? Because if the people empowered, na, they were like, um, they're contributing a lot. In fact, the entire idea, they will contribute it if they feel empowered. So that's it, Sir Nelson. Yeah, I, I, I'm getting a key principle here. People are so obsessed about process. In design thinking, it's, is it step one, two, three? Yeah, we know about iterative. But I think you're telling us it's also like the philosophy behind it. Okay, it's also the mindset. It's not just a process. In, the, in which case, like, you know, you're, actually you're thinking like a left brain person. So the philosophy should be there. Like I said, it's human centered. And then as you also said that, you know, we have to make people, when they see the philosophy, that's the one that makes them excited, not the process, because they have other processes that can talk about. Now, I like that part where in, you're talking about the divergent convergent. And I like that part about, you know, having the empathy. What about the prototyping? Are there best practices in prototyping? I, I understand that in design thing, you're keeping the prototype let's say simple, low cost, paper mockups, design, whatever. What are the best practices when it comes to prototyping? Um, that's a great question again. Um, for the prototyping, you need to come up with almost, almost something like 90% of the product so, um, on the output. If it's a product, you need to come up with a real product. So um, for example, we're developing a, uh, a shoe. No? So you need to come up with a shoe, okay? So for example, so this, is, this helps your boss or your client to imagine how it's going to look like in the end. No? And then if this is a house, in fact, this is a practice of architects, no? they create a prototype. They spend so much time in creating a prototype and miniature of the building or around the house. And then when you open it, you can see the interior. 
So in that way, in this manner, they could imagine themselves. This is the experience. This is the experience. So to win the client's uh, approval or to win your boss's approval, you need to give them the experience as if they are using it. Okay, that's the objective of creating a prototype. So now, um, if this is a service, you need to create and demonstrate the service as in apply it. If you're working in a restaurant, you have to test it to one of your clients. Don't, yeah, you can try the role playing, no? So if your client or if your boss saying, um, are you sure this is effective? Yes, sir, let me show you the video. We, uh, this is the prototype. So once the customer enters the room, the, the door, they will have this um, temperature check and et cetera, et cetera. And then this is the social distancing and all of our customers are something like this. Okay, good. Yeah, but I want you to improve this too. Good. So, you know, the discussion is more aligned, more clear, and the communication is very well. And um, that's the objective of prototype. So if this is an app development or a website or anything that you create, you need to create at almost 90%. As in, as in beta test. No? Um, when you say, sir, this is the app that we develop, send the link and then let them experience the prototype. Okay, this button's not working yet. Ah, yes, sir. It's just a prototype. Po, no? So let me, uh, but this is the example. This is swipe left. Lang po. Let's swipe left. Okay. I think it's okay. I like it. Uh, can we change the color? So in that manner, in that manner, let me minimize the um, problem. No? And then even the decision making helps them decide really fast. Again, no objective natin as a client or uh, as a serving the client no, is to help them, um, help them visualize their thinking, help them materialize their thinking. Because all our clients, all our bosses have this kind of vision that we don't understand. Now, our objective, our job is to make it, materialize it, and help them no, make it real. So right in front of them. Now... Yes. I get that this process has to be interdisciplinary. And so I'm thinking now, who should be there in the design thinking process or meetings? And I'll ask a different question. Who should not be there in the process? That's a great question. It's a different kind of question, no, sir. Who should not be yeah. there? Okay. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, who should not be there is the entire team of, for example, engineering department? No. The engineering department should not be on the entire team. Why? Because the idea will be biased. Okay, let me share an example. Sorry, no. This is the usual setup. Because whenever I discuss this, I usually compare the usual to the design thinking way. So the usual setup is, for example, since I'm a marketing, so marketing team will discuss the campaign. Okay? So after discussing the campaign, they, proper, uh, they will present it to their boss. So if present the boss, reject because they don't like the idea. Okay, go back to the drawing board, discuss the campaign again, send a boss, approve. Once it's approved, and then another layers of approval. So go to the second layers of approval. Pag hindi approved, go back to the drawing board, discuss again, present with sub VP, and then present with sub boss. So you see the long, uh, the long process now, no, sir? So once it's approved, ang mangyayari, babalik sila doon, again, look for the supplier. So yung kakausapin, procurement. Because of the procurement, we don't have budget for this. Bam! Bawas ulit, balik sa drawing board, cut all the cost, and then pagpasa sa procurement, approve. Okay? Pagdating sa approval, may supplier ba tayo ito? Ay, wala po. Nasa China. Okay. So, instead of implement mo to ASAP, you need to find a way to how to do this. And sa China pa pala. Ba't hindi mo sila natin mm -hmm. So, something like that. No? So, there, there, there's a lot of problem arises. So, very, very good sir yung question nyo na sino dapat ang wala doon. So, again, dapat doon wala yung the entire marketing team. For example lang po ito ha, I'm just setting example. Wala po yung entire marketing team. So now, ang dapat kasama mo sa meeting are those stakeholders or involved in that particular project. So if you're creating a project, you should be there as a marketing, the customer service, the procurement, okay, or the finance, that it should be there. The graphic designer should be there. All the things that involved in your project, you need a representative involved within the meeting. Okay? So right then and there, they could discuss all the obstacles in doing this project. So right then and there, when you present to your boss, oh, bakit natin budget mo? Um, si Miss po, I was there in a meeting, and she says we still have, okay. 
Oh, bakit? Bakit siya niya? Oh, uh, yes ma'am. So the supplier, we already talked with the supplier. Bakit ito yung design? Ah, yes ma'am. Uh, we already created a mock-up. Okay, good. So, kind of implementation. And uh, next month na po. Approve. Go. So, yun po, no? This is, this is uh, we are now, kasi because we are facing in a very fast pace of uh, economy. And the old ways of brainstorming like that is not, for me, ha, sir, um, it's not effective because most of the first world countries are using this design sprint um, and design thinking and brainstorming style of um, problem solving and decision making. So this is, should be a practice in the Philippines as well. Yeah, I love that. So do I understand you correctly, Rob, that let's say, of course, you're not bringing the team in that meeting, but a representative of the team so that that representative is empowered to speak for the team she has the idea of the perspective of that team. So that then different team departments, let's say marketing, legal, research, production, yes. then these are represented. They're in that same room where we have all those post-its or whatever is the online thing. That's, I think, what you're trying to say? Absolutely, absolutely. Let me share a perfect example, Pono. I conducted the facilitations in a legal department. It's very, very beyond in my expertise. So um, one of the legal uh, uh, friend no, asked me, Rock, I need to create um, uh, implementation say, or rules. Ilang buwan na ako nag-iisip na ito. Kahit mo ba akong tulungan? Yeah, that's right. I, that's right, design thinking. Sige. Sige. So, sino kailangan ko? So, binigay niya sa akin all the list of lawyers. Take it out. Take it out. Take it out. Rock, these are, the, these are my colleagues. They need to be here. I understand. I understand. Pero sino ba ang kailangan mong gawa ng ano? Ah, yung sa procurement. Kailangan ko to sa finance. Sino pa? HR. Absolutely. Kasi baka may, masal, may matamaan tayo sa, uh, sa people, uh, sa human resources. Okay, ano pa? Ano pa? So, can you invite them? Are you sure? So do you trust the so, okay, If you don't trust me, trust the process. Okay, good, 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 good. Sige. So implement naman. And you know what, sir? I just conducted two hours. Two hours to find sprint and nakalabas kami ng output. Sabi niya, after the meeting, we stayed in the Zoom. It was like, Rock, grabe ka. You are God sent. I've been thinking about this for six months. Nakuha natin in two hours. So, so, so don't thank me. Thank you. Because you believe in me, and you believe in the process. So, I, uh, Rock, next meeting ulit, ha? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sige, sige, sige. I'll, I'll do my best though. I'll give more time to you to facilitate this. So, yeah. yun po, no, sir, that's why it's really essential. You, you are in a sweet spot. Huh? Number one, repeat business. And now, you have a good problem where to find the time for that client. And what I was almost expecting that client to say, you want to invite this guy from SR? What does he know? Or in Filipino? Walang alam yun. So I can imagine how it looks like. But I think that's also the beauty of design thing. You have to assume everybody has a perspective. They can contribute. Don't just shut off na. He's not an SME. So he doesn't understand our process. So yes. yeah, I love that. I love that. Tama ka, sir. Okay. Kasi may, sorry to continue, sir. So, sorry to interrupt you there. Kasi meron na pong meeting with my client. Sabi niya, bakit kailangan natin a first timer dito? Bakit kailangan natin ng bata? Sabi ko, who goes to your restaurant? Bata. Who? So, they need to understand them, their point of view. And then, bak bakit ka nag-invite na hindi ilalang alam yung restaurant ko? So, we need to get the point of view of the first time who visit your restaurant. Ah, oo nga. No. Alam mo, sir, by my surprise, by, by our surprise, those new and the young contributed a lot of ideas. Galing. Galing. Yeah. And I think it's like we see in several situations, if you want to design thinking a toy, involve children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding. But I have one question, but it's itching in my mind. When you now have the design thinking team and they're going to make a decision, does it have to be anonymous or is it like majority rule? What do you do then? Um, it's kind of both there. Eh? Um, depends on the situation. Um, because if the idea or the solutions no, that they came up with is really uh, unanimous um, or, or something like majority, we, we proceed. No? But if there's a... Because we have voting, diba? We have voting. Diplomatic kasi ang decision making and design thinking. So if the voting is um, draw, something like that, draw. Okay, the idea one and idea two have the same votes. So what I do is, would you like to combine it? Would you like to combine it? If the boss says, yes, that's a great idea. 
But if they say, they strongly feel, no, it should be different. I'm always going to the boss, to the decision maker. For example, you're the decision maker, Sir Nelson. Sir Nelson, can I talk to you for a while? Yeah. This is a situation. This is a draw decisions. Ito yung ginawa nila, ito yung ginawa nila. So, what do you think? So, then the boss will come up there and the representative of those team who voted for that idea one and idea two, they will defend it. Okay? They will defend it to you. And then after that, what do you think? Okay. The boss will decide. So, ganun po nangyayari. Okay. Yeah, at least everybody's voices are heard. Everybody's okay. viewpoints are understood and conveyed. I like mm -hmm. that. So, I mm -hmm. think we have already discussed a lot about the process. I hate to use that word. I know it's like, it's a paradigm. It's a mindset. It's iterative. So, I use the term process loosely. I learned a lot there. And now... Rock, where do people get to know more about your work? Can you tell us more, let's say, how they can reach you? Do you have a website? I know you have LinkedIn. How do people get in touch with you? Um, yeah, they can get in touch with me. Uh, my website is still a work in progress um, because um, I'm busy taking care of my clients than myself. <laughs> but this time, uh, I thought my coach told me, you need to spend time with yourself um, and develop all of this because their um, term natin is hinug na. Something like that. So this is the only time I created my uh, my website, and then uh, maybe I will post it in my LinkedIn. So you can get in touch with me, with me through LinkedIn, and I'm I'm always uh, online all the time there. And if you try to find me at Facebook, wala na po ako uh, But I have Messenger. That's the only thing I keep because you know, I have I have uh, thousands of friends, but then and connections at Facebook. So they could uh, message me via uh, via messengers. That's why I keep I kept the uh, the messenger. And uh, email you can email me at rapleo 311 at gmail.com or to my design thinking, which is design thinking mnl at the uh, at gmail.com. And then for my number, if you want to get in touch with my number, I have Viber. Mas active po ko Viber and WhatsApp. Um, my written WhatsApp, same number lang po, 0917-896-1115. So we could discuss anything po on how to develop that, um, how to how to introduce this thing in your corporations if you want to do it, public grants. Yeah, let's talk about it. I'll be glad to him. Thank you, Rock. And by the way, be careful because somebody may call you up at 3am. I have a problem at the factory. What's the design thinking process? <laughs> No, just yeah, yeah. So, no, sir. Um, if if that's your number, if that's you, I will make time for you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I know how it is to be a very popular, sought-in-demand expert and consultant, and we wish you all the best. I think you're going from strength to strength. May God even expand your territories further. And guys, ladies and gentlemen, follow Rock Cleo in his link, and I think that's one of the easiest way to keep track about what he is going to be teaching next, the next innovation, the next website, and that sort of thing. So you cannot go wrong with Rock Cleo. Thank you, Rock. Thank and you so that much. wraps up another episode of Leaders Edge. Join us next week, season five, episode eight, where we'll have the next guest, Ms. Delby Bragais, who'll talk about personal branding on purpose, passion, and prosperity. Follow our YouTube channel, and we now see you in the next time where learning is a never-ending journey with limitless vistas. Good evening.